Hey y'all, welcome to the Pungo Prairie. Old man Winter's had an icy grip on things around here lately. Gets me in the mood for a little down home style cooking. Think I'm gonna make up a Sassy Mary Pungo Prairie chicken in the pot. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this. Now my buddy Willard Ashburn makes up this awesome Bloody Mary mix. It's his own secret recipe, born in his own little kitchen right here in Pungo. Now, he also owns Ashburn Sauce Company, and he bottles this stuff up along with his other products and ships it all over the place. Now, this is no ordinary Bloody Mary mix. This is Sassy Mary. Not only does it make the best Bloody Mary on the planet, it'll make up some pretty darn good chicken, too. Now, there's two really great things about this chicken recipe right here. Number one, it's going to take you five minutes 10 at the most to get everything ready and get this chicken in the pot and get it on the stove. Number two, you can fix it up any way you want. Put anything in there with this chicken that your little heart desires. Now I happened to think about it and I had the time. So I already had our chicken marinating up in that Sassy Mary here in a Ziploc bag for a few hours. But if you forgot about it or don't have the time to do that, it's not going to be a disaster. Just put the Sassy Mary on it and go with it in the pot just like that. Now, just in case you're looking for ideas, I got a few suggestions of what you might want to put in the pot with that chicken. How about a nice head of fresh green cabbage? Cut you up some cabbage wedges and put in there. I got a medley of new potatoes, some little red skins, these little Irish potatoes, these purple potatoes from up in Alaska, maybe some spring onions. Cut you up some fresh carrots and put in there, maybe some stalks of celery. How about quarter up a yellow onion? Sliced mushrooms, or uh, how about a turnip, or a rutabaker. Man, I love turnips and rutabakers. If you really want to make that chicken sing, how about some fresh parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. Now I got a five quart pot here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is put a stick of butter in it. Now I'm just gonna take this pot with the butter in it, set it over on the stove, and let it melt over some low heat while I cut up some of these vegetables. We're just gonna cut up this head of cabbage here. Make a few little wedges. We're going to arrange these cabbage wedges right down in the pot. Peel up our carrots here. Cut them in some pieces. Put them in there. Take a few of these potatoes and put them in there. Quarter up this onion. Cut up the celery. I'm going to peel this turnip. Peel it just like an apple. Then the rutabaker. Slice up the rutabaker. Quarter up the slices. Do the same thing with the turnip. Dice the turnip up a little bit smaller. Now look, I got a few cloves of garlic here. I'm just going to kind of coarse chop them with my Italian blood. You know I got to have garlic. I put garlic in everything. I'm going to chop up a little bit of this parsley. Add a little bit of that in the pot. Now, Kind of holly out of place in the middle of that pot. Set your chicken right down in the middle. Now you might have to rearrange your vegetables in there a little bit so that that chicken will fit down in there. This is a four and three quarter pound chicken and you want to check the lid for fit. Make sure that lid is going to go back on there. Now I'm going to take the lid off, add a few of these mushrooms down in the nooks and crannies. Take some of our sage leaves, do the same thing with the thyme. And take that sprig of rosemary, drip them rosemary leaves off and kind of put around in there. I'll put a few of these spring onions right around the edges. Now I'm going to add about another cup or two of our Sassy Mary. Now I got a pretty full pot here because I put it all in there. There was more suggestions than meaning you had to use all of it. Now see, that didn't take long at all. Now guys, listen to me. This is the perfect thing that you can come home and get supper working for your wife when she has to work late. Get something going on for them kids. Now we're going to put this pot of chicken with all these good vegetables on the stove, turn the heat up and get things kind of boiling in there. Then we're going to turn the heat back to about a medium. It's going to take probably about an hour and a half to cook it all. Now something you might want to add to it is a little bit of vodka, maybe a cup or so. Hey, at least this way we can have a good vodka sauce working in there. Hey, you don't have to tell your wife. Doesn't matter. That alcohol is going to cook off. It's just going to have some flavor going on in that pot. Put the lid on it and let it start to do its thing. Now see there, it didn't take any time at all to get the chicken and all them other good things in that pot and on the stove cooking. Now, 
you got an hour and a half before it's ready to eat. And that's another good thing about this recipe. Guys, remember like we talked about earlier, if you're doing this because your wife's working late and you got to have something ready to eat when she gets home, feed the kids, maybe help them get their homework going, you got an hour and a half. You can do something like vacuum the house, fold some laundry, wash some windows, maybe clean the ring out of the bathtub. Listen to me now. You make good use of that time, and later on, when them kids go to bed, maybe you and her can get to re-celebrate your honeymoon on a weeknight. My kids are all grown. I don't have a bathtub, and I don't do no ironing. I'd go outside and mow the yard if it hadn't snowed eight inches last night. There ain't no woman around here that won't keep me warm later, neither. Well, let's check our chicken here. Take a little bit of this stock from the pan and base it over top a little bit. It's been in there about an hour now. That's looking good. Sure is a pretty sunset tonight. That blazing sky across this snow-covered Pungo Prairie. Hear the geese calling out there in the field. Hoot owl back in the woods. That chicken sure gonna taste good. Now, it's been an hour and a half. I'm gonna take our chicken out of the pot here and put it on this platter. With a slotted spoon, I'm gonna take all our veggies and arrange them around the platter. Leaving all the liquid, the stock, in that pot for the time being. I took a quarter cup of flour and put it in a half a cup of cold water. Now whisk it all around in there good and get that flour dissolved up. Get it all dissolved up to a nice creamy consistency. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that flour and water mixture in here. Kind of make us a nice little sauce there. You don't want it too thick, just enough to have some body to it. As it boils, it'll thicken even more. So just do bring it to a boil. There you go, starting to boil up now. See how it's gotten thicker? That's just about where I want it. Now if you want it a little thicker, you can add a little bit more flour. Now that, my friends, is a Sassy Mary Pungo Prairie Chicken. Dear Lord, thank you for this fine chicken and all those good veggies that we cooked up in that pot with that Sassy Mary that my dear friend Willard Ashburn created. Now bless this food to nourish our bodies and strengthen us for a life in Thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you know i got to try me some of this. Cut off a piece of that tender white breast meat. Dip it in that good old sauce we made. Mmm. Now that's sassy. I bet by now your wife's home. Call the kids. Pour her a glass of wine. Slap grandma and let's eat. Now you know I was only kidding, Memo. Ain't nobody could cook like you did. And that, girls and boys, is what's cooking on the Pungo Prairie.